and welcome along to another Zoom episode of the S. Hi, <laughs> hi. Well, we're here. We don't know who we're joined with. This is what we're asking: Is it Gordon? Is it Harry? Is it a forty man? Well, you tell me. Let me tell you, big man. You can call me whatever you like, even darling or sweetheart, whatever you fancy. <laughs> uh, my full name is James Gordon Bryce Miller. Uh, I've been known as Harry since I was uh, seventeen. Uh, my first retail job, and my other nickname is Pixie. So you know, so really, guys, honestly, you can uh, you can call me what you like, Mister Forty as well. That would be that'd be lovely. <laughs> so, how are you finding things in this crazy new environment that we find ourselves in? Um, just before we come on here, pal, we're having a wee blather, as you know, and, and, and I said, you know, it's like. I don't want to use the word opportunity because that opportunity for me sounds a bit disrespectful for the situation because there's a lot of people who, you know, a lot of people, you know, are, are going to find it really, really difficult, not through no fault of their own. We've been, we've been, we've been forced into this situation. Um, but what probably maybe not use the word opportunity, power. I think more the word of, you know, being very, very focused on what we need to do moving forward and, and make possibly our business work but not even to that mate just to to make sure that we're all moving forward positively mentally and um, so pal it's been it was i'm not going to lie the first two months of this is probably saying the first two months of this whole mental thing was really really difficult mm -hmm. um after that two months i really really struggled you know mentally we struggled you know i've got two amazing kids fantastic wife and when you're forced into that situation you know it's like that's where kind of really the, the honesty needs to come out because when the cracks in your personality really start to show and, and you know, it's like in where, and I hate just saying human because the human aspect, you'll get loads of potential being a human being. You know, it's, I hate that thing where people say, oh, you're only human is a negative. No, hold on a minute here. We're human. There's loads of massive positives to that. Oh, yes. And about how you, what's that, pal? Sorry. There's resilience to being a human as well, you know. Absolutely, um, and and uh, and that's another thing as well. But I think we can say, you know, from from the resilient aspect, it's like, you know, the whole mental health. It's not even I'd say an issue. It's always been there. Your mental health and your physical health, any type of health, is the same thing. And you know, it's like I don't even want to use the word stigma. It's just that people have kind of approached it in loads of different ways. And you know, it's like being happy. You know, mental health. Yeah. Being sad. Mental health. You know, and it's like, like, and I just kind of feel that, you know, we've, we just kind of want to try to make this work as much as we possibly can. We've all been forced into a situation that we have to stay on our toes and say, do you know what? How do we make this work? There's no such thing as what if. What if is you make up your own head? You know, it's like, how do we is actually looking at the real situation and actually here and now, pal? So, do you know what, buddy? Very grateful. I'd just like to say everybody watching as well, anybody supported us over the past while, and used to guys for even asking me to be here. Thank you very, very much. We, you know, you use you, directly affect our life, so thank you. No, do you know what, mate? It's uh, it's, it's an honour for us to have you on. We've been trying to make sorry. this happen. Uh, but, sorry about advertising there, guys. I'm just having my coffee, right? Back, so, right? Looking, back to front. Okay. <laughs> right, we, need, we need a couple of them, I think. Man. Aye, We've aye. got a couple oh, mate, of honestly, cups as well. I so we... this, man, it's just black coffee, man. It's about a, it's about a triple <laughs> mental... Yeah. <laughs> but we've been honestly we've been trying to do this for a while now i've had so much respect you come up in a, our office quite a lot um because you know that the brands are intrinsically linked somehow because it's music yes. fabric is music yep and uh you know what you do in terms of creativity and obviously we know jen and, and connor graham and stuff yep. so yep. yeah, yeah. You know, your brand and our brand i've it's been in, in the kind of forefront of what we've been doing uh, Definitely. for years, you know. And uh, and I was saying to Ellen as well, like the total honour of playing Riverside, you know, under the 40 clothing stage on the top yeah. chip, you know, that there for me was a total blast, yeah, man. Good. Like it really was. And the set, we get such good feedback as well. It was like, <laughs> man, thank God that happened, you know. So thank you. These were amazing. These were amazing. <laughs> um, but, you know, that, that, back to that again, as you say, we know with the wee blether before we come on air, but, you know, it's like, no matter whether it's music, no matter whether it's clothing, or anything like that as well, if you love what you do, you share the same honesty and passion as no matter what. And when we met Mark McKechnie from Riverside, we got on really well. It was about relationships. It's always about relationships with us. So myself and Mark started talking the same again, no matter whether it was about music or fashion, you realise that there is that synergy, there's that connection. 
love the honesty of just loving what you do. And do you know what? As I said before, there's no such thing as what it's only how do we. How do we make this work? You know, we loved what Mark's been doing for so many years. We love what you guys do because you share that connection. It's a bit... People go, oh, how do you build a brand? Well, we've not built a brand. We've just told you what we love to do and we want to share it with you. You know, that's not about how you build a brand. It's about the honesty and about the sense of community. But actually saying, come on. I mean, we've always said this as well. I'll never sell you anything. I'll tell you a story about why we do it. And that, for me, and it's you guys telling stories through music. Yeah. You know, why do you produce music? Why, why do you come to that and you end it and you, you press play and you go, oh my, because you're burning your soul. You know, it's like, Human if you... Human tellers, aren't they? Like, that is what we, around campfires, telling a story from the very early days of human beings. We've Stephen, telling. Everyone's, about, everyone's about people. And there still, still seems to be this approach with people that they don't acknowledge it, that no matter what you do in life, it's about honest relationships with people. And as you get a bit older, um, what you find is, is that that becomes so much key. I mean, it's like you tend to find it's like this whole cliche. Um, and cliches are nuggets of knowledge passed down from generations. I just don't think you're in the right part of your life to kind of really fully understand them. And it's like, you know, it's, you, you just get to a, a, a point where all you want to be is honest. And just, and you, you're kind of a circle becomes a lot tighter because you then start dealing with honest people who love what they do. Yeah. Because that's what kind of attracts to you because it's the, yeah. it's the type of person that you're ultimately turning into. Everybody's different, but, you know, for me, that's what's, you know, and you know as well, guys, this is another thing. You know, when you find what you love to do, you put your heart and soul in it. You know, there's going to be difficult times and there's going to be, but it's how you perceive them as difficult times. I mean, we've just had an absolute DEFCON 1 situation in the last <laughs> couple of weeks. But same again, it's like, ah, you're under pressure because you love it so much. But do you know what? When you love it as much as that, what you do is you look for a solution, right? That's the difference. When you don't love what you do, you look for an exit. It's the two fundamental parts of it. Yep, and fun. even with COVID and stuff like that as well, boys, you know, it's like, if you want to find a way to get through it, you will. And some people don't have that ability. And, and it's almost like they're letting the situation happen to them. But that's just life as well. You know, and, and we kind of just think through the whole this, this whole thing's like that. What do we do to just kind of keep this going? You know, and it's like, and that's what, that's what it's about. But it's about just being honest with yourself and the, the and living, eat, breathe, sleep, and shit. Yeah. What you do for a living, do you know what I mean? So what you do for a life, this is the difference. It's not what you do for a living, it's what you do for a life. Yeah, yeah, bang on. Do you not think, though, as well, like so much of that anxiety that people are giving into, like the fear of the situation, like a lot of it stems from what you're talking about there. They, they don't really actually want to do what they're doing. There's nothing really to drive towards. So all you have is time to sit and ponder and think about the scariness of what's going on. Whereas yeah. see when you've got the blinkers on and you're like, man, the business is closing if we don't act and if we don't do this and if we don't do that, you've not got time to sit and wallow, man. You've not got sit, you know, it's just about driving forward. And the fact that you love it, as you say, like we do, you know, we're teaming out of bed every morning to be like, right, how are we figuring out this today? As opposed to the huge picture and freaking out in your mind, it's like day by day, problem issue by issue challenge by challenge if you yeah. like you know what there's only just ever here i, I, I listen to an amazing uh, indian guy called saguru he's phenomenal he's a he's not a spiritual leader he's a he's, he's just about well it's, it's about real situations about trying to make yourself happy now a lot of the self-help stuff and that same again it's like you've got to be in the right frame of mind and actually want you can try to make that work a lot of people don't have that opportunity but, you know, it's like you don't, there's only ever here now. See what we were talking about just now, chaps. That's, there's no, we've, we've, got a, we've got an expectation of what's going to happen in the future, but we don't know, right? And you, you, what you kind of are, you're a bit scared of, of what might happen is it's just your memories dressed up. Do you know what I mean? Of kind of all these insecurities you bring forward. You know, oh, what, what about this? What about this? And it takes a long, it's like try to be physical, physically fit. And it's your mental fitness is the same. You have to practice at it. You know, right. some people don't have that ability to become physically fit. Same again, I'm not, I'm certainly not putting this under a, a, a blanket banner, you know, because I'm fully, fully aware, pal, that there's just some things in life that people just do not have the ability to take care of. I really, really appreciate that, pal. But the other side as well, you know, it's like if you do have the ability to do that, it is about just saying, right, okay, let's just sit there. My mum and look really big in that, don't they? <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> There's the ability to actually, actually go, do you know what? Well, it's actually, you, you're right, you're saying it. It's like just about what do, how do we do this? Yeah. How do we make this work? Right, it's mental. 
But you know what? We, we need to make it. It's like you say as well, Paul. Like, you know, it was that absolute fear it was during this whole situation going, you know, like, like nobody knows what's going to happen. So, guys, you've done it as well. It's about, you know, I felt like it was about the podcasts. I felt it was about the same again, talk about how it's all about people. And during lockdown, it's about, it wasn't about trying to keep the brand relevant. It was about actually going, do you know, hold on a minute here. I'm in exactly the same situation as that person over that other side of that camera. Mm -hmm. And we feel the same. And it's about what can we do to actually have that connection with each other and, and hopefully share a bit of the, the anxiety and maybe turn that into, a, into a, a positive for a wee while. And, you know, the fact that I got to play music again on a Saturday night was just brilliant. And I, in 13 weeks, I think I drank 13 bottles of gin. So I don't miss the hangovers on a Sunday now. But I miss that wee sense of community again through, through the music aspect and actually realise how important that music is to people. And if you look at what's happening just now, and you look at not being able to, venues not being able to play music, that's a fundamental part of people's soul. You know, and the memories that music creates for you and the feelings that it creates for you. And that is, again, is like that, that's almost like taking away that physical ability to touch somebody. Mm -hmm. My God, I'm a hugger. And it's, 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 really, it's really difficult because as soon as I meet somebody that, that you love or you've got feelings for, and like, like, how are you doing? You Aye. can't touch them. Yeah. And you're going, oh my God, and it's the same with music. away from you a little bit, doesn't it? So it's just, it's gone, it's taken away from you and it is quite... Yeah. It's damaging. No? Well, this is, is why we, with that self-awareness, though, have to do our very best to like counteract that with whatever way we can. Bob and weave. You know, bob and weave. It's it's also doing these podcasts, but it's like when we do meet, it's like letting people know as well. Like, man, I really want to hug you right now. You know what I mean? <laughs> the folks that you're having He's the mask on. And just, you know what I mean? It's like, you know, there's there's definite ways, so I think, in terms of just raising the actual awareness of still being able to show love to each other. Do you know what I mean? Connect. Still being able to connect. That's, again, that's a worrying thing. Masks on, nobody looking at you, nobody smiling. You know what I mean? Everybody's scared of each other. We need to get past that point, you know, because that's that's worrying, especially for the kids going to school and all that. You know what I mean? Well, me, I've got two, I've got two amazing wee kids, man. I've got my son, Bryce, 11. Um, I got that big guy just in, you know, even the reason why we started the business and we, I'm drawing the monster and, that and just everything. But, but not even just that, mate, you know, that, that young kids, you know, the wee man's got, a, a, he struggles, the wee man's, you know, it, through, he's, he's dyslexic and, and, you know, it's like how he processes. And he's an inspiration to me. My daughter is just an eight year old crackpot. You know, I, lo I love it. You know, she's funny. And it's like that part, it's like, it's like you're having to almost like, we're having to teach our kids. And a different nannies have been through this at the moment and it's like but i tell you what I've, I've noticed is i suppose when you think about it your kids are actually having to live through this and they adjust you have to adjust you know we're maybe going to go in a wee bit after andy but we're actually talking about this is like the wee man's really kind of into kind of world war ii and about history and stuff like that and he was asking things about world war ii and about how how people adjusted and it's actually a wee bit like a wee bit what we're doing at the moment as well isn't it? it's like it's like what is your normality because i've always said this through your normalism from what, from our normal, what your normal is, is very personal. But it's how we treat this as a normality in a situation of what we've got to do in a day-to-day -day business. But you know what, chaps? We will get through this. Mm -hmm. There is actually, I have got no doubt in my mind that we will come through this the other side and go, do you know what? Here we go. Yeah. You know, and, it's, and that's what it's about. You know, it's like, Am I waffling a bit here? Because I, I waffle. Absolutely not, mate. It's inspiring, you know. It's inspiring. I'm, I'm laughing because we've we've been having these conversations even yesterday. Exact stuff, yeah. You know, we're in here not even feeling that it's work. I'm sure you're exactly the same. I left here at exactly half and working on a track. Straight back up in the morning, buzzing to talk to you today. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's <laughs> Paul, you know, it's like, and honestly, the same again. It's like, you know, well, music's been a, a massive passion of mine for, for years, and I've been very grateful that, I've got to do some really, really, really cool stuff, you know, you know, and some of the same again, the people, you know, getting to do Space in Ibiza, which was just, and even how that came about with the, 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 the boys from Digital Groove Records and the relationship we had with them and it's all about relationships, it's all about honesty. Definitely. But we, we feel the same as well, Paul, when we, when we design product, you know, it's like, and it's like what I love about it, it's probably the same sales as you're building a track and, you know, you're, you know, you kind of are building your bars and you're getting it. And it's like, not until it comes to the end and you press play and you go, oh, <laughs> it's, it's the thing that comes alive. Yeah. You know, it's like, what in here? You know, you can't, you, you can't have anything physical until it starts here. Yeah. Nothing, nothing happens unless you have an idea. 
and that's where you know it's like especially it's about different types of people and about the creative aspect you know and being academic or whatever you you know whatever whoever you are but it's the same as like when we design product and then you know the sample arrives i mean like honestly man we're going oh my check this out <laughs> aye, aye. and it's the same thing pal as you're going oh, it's like it's that joy <laughs> and i think that's the thing it's about we, you can't have joy every day all day that's just not life you can try hard but i think for me pal, it's about marking and remembering and it's like celebrating that but a joy that you can have you know because you need to kind of accept that because life will be hard yeah. but also you need to you need to celebrate you need to go and you go mental or, or you know have a party in the house or, or do something but you know what don't feel guilty about it just enjoy it you don't have to justify it to anybody so we're the same as you pal it's a bit it's a bit expressing and celebrating your joy yeah Absolutely. So we were doing that literally like five minutes before we came on with you. He was like me at the track. He was walking on last night. The tears are going by. I'm hanging on the label. I'm hanging on this. You've got to be on this attitude, man. Right, we better do this podcast. You know what I mean? Like, you know, oh, no, what time is it? Like, three minutes. Three, we better send them a link. But definitely getting you down once we kind of open up as well. For, I'd, you love know. To, I'd love to have you down in the studio, mate. Definitely. Oh, listen, guys. I would, as I say, like, you know, uh, uh, music for me has been it's been always a connection for me and, and, and I love it. You know yourselves, guys, like even like when you, you, you play, you know, I'm very grateful that I had some really amazing residencies over the years. It was eight years at the tunnel. I did the Sunday nights at Liquid Cool, you know, and, you know, but even like that as well, you know, I think sometimes people can be a, a bit romantic about music and like, especially with, you know, how when house music really kind of started. And it was almost this, people, this, fantasist idea of like every DJ was amazing and every track you played was amazing. No, it wasn't. There was really crap DJs out there who played really crap music. You know, and I played a lot of crap music at <laughs> the times. And it was always difficult because when you had, you guys, guys you know as well, when you, when you have a residency and it's about constantly trying to motivate yourself and about constantly thinking about and you set and guess and because you love what you do so much, it's like you, you revere your peers and I've got, what do people think? And I think that's another great thing about getting older, is you stop worrying about what other people think. You never really truly lose that. I mean, even like we're just about to start now getting into other stores in the UK, and you're being judged for the first time of people that you revere and share the same passion as you. So, of course, you can be a bit nervous mm -hmm. of thinking, what do they think? You know, so you never, ever lose that. So when people go, ah, I don't really care what folk think, are you there? <laughs> <laughs> but not in a, in, a, in, a, in a broad yeah. term. You know, you always get that wee thing that you go, same again when you boys produce music. You know, you'll have DJs and producers that you revere. And if you send your stuff to them, you know, you'll go, oh, I wonder what they think. You know, is it good enough? You know, it's like, then you start asking questions of yourself. And it's the yeah. same when we design product. You know, we go, oh, is it, even though we love it, you know, does, it, does, that, does that message does it transpire? Yeah. You know, yeah, exactly. So, you know, it's like, you can't be for everyone. But, you know, you put yourself out there for judgment sometimes and that can be a bit difficult. The thing is, I think it's like, it is ultimately about putting yourself out there and like, I, everyone does have that slight bit of what they, they, they care about, but ultimately it doesn't really matter outside of the circle of people that you care for, that you value their opinion, because no matter what you do, as you say, from a designer to a tune, someone's going to hate it. Someone's going to say something bad about it. But that's, that, the only time that would really affect me is if that was Stephen that said that. If you were like, big man, what is that? You know, I'm like, oh, crap. You know, there's people there that, you know, that are striving, so doing I was, stuff. I was going to say, hey, uh, Harry, like, so with, with that said, like, how important is it in your team for, like, synergy when it comes to, you know, staying within, like, your group and trusting each other's opinions and, and trying to keep the blinkers on, as Gal said? Because obviously you've got an amazing relationship with Peter and the team there. So how important is that, like, for what you um, guys do? I think, I think, you know, for us, when I th generally what my experience is, I could, you know what, chaps, the whole thing about I don't like to offer opinions. I, I, I like to kind of just offer, you know, the honesty of what we do. And for me, when you truly love what you do, there should never be any, if there's an ego in what you love to do, you don't love it. Because ego's a front, ego's a, 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 you know, a face that you put on for people. And, you know, fundamentally with this, this I hate you, see, we're going to hate you, the more business, fundamentally for what we do for our life, it's about having that respect. Because, like, for example, you know, you've got myself, Peter, Johnny, David. I mean, we've got, I, 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 you know, I, I can't do what the guys do. 
you know, I revere what they do. So, but we all bring things. But the most important thing for us, pal, is like we've all got honesty with each other and we don't have ego. And we know for a fact that if Peter says something about something, mm-hmm. like, for example, from a design aspect, you listen. Yeah. You know, if Johnny says something about a management aspect, you listen. So from that aspect as well, pal, you know, it's like, but you also have to, when we have not so much a disagreement, that's not completely the wrong term to use. If you get something to say, there's, there's a reason for it. Yeah. You know, and, and that's why as well, mate, when we're working as a team, you know, we have, we have a team meeting every Monday. And of course, there's going to be differences of how you see things. But really what it is, is about driving towards actually doing the best thing that we can. So absolutely, pal, you know, you've got to have, you know, you talk about kind of a, when we've been at school, right? Or when we've started our jobs and you've worked with, you know, you've been taught by teachers that you don't go on with or you're, you know, you're managed by a manager that you don't go on with. You can't do your job or you can't learn properly, true? Because it's about that. You need that connection with people. Yeah. So, you know, relationships, guys, are everything yeah. and you know it's like but people evolve and you know personalities change because you know within your dynamic i mean god adding massive personalities to to what we do for our life of course it's if it be, everybody was just trying to adjust and learn each other and that's the another thing about building a community you know you can't always have the the, the same type of people in there but if you understand you know the, the common goal and the, what the honesty is that and you really want to make it work, then you learn to compromise. Yeah. And you learn that, that that person's personality, you wouldn't do that, but that person's personality, you would do that. So for me even as well, pal, it's been a massive, massive learning curve from a managing director's perspective of how to, you know, sit in the middle, not at the top, sit in the middle and let, learn how to make it work between everybody. And that's been amazing. You know, it's, it's back to that whole thing. You know, when you know you're always you're always learning, which is it's such a thing. It's not a cliche again. And if you love what you do, you'll take. And that's another thing. I, I've always maintained this. There's no such thing as a mistake in life, right? If you do something for the first time with no prior knowledge of it, how can it be a mistake? You have no experience. Mm-hmm. When it does become a mistake is when you go, you make a judgment on experience and stuff you have knowledge of. That's it. So you know what? You know I'm very grateful that. Life teaches you every time that you go into a new situation of how you can morph and change yourself as a, a person. So it's been, you know, having those relationships, pal, have been, it's been fantastic. It teaches you a lot about yourself. Have you always been, like, kind of into the, the whole vibe, like the positive mindset? Like, have you, do you consume a lot of books or is it something you've done over time through experience? Do you listen to podcasts? Like, a bit, a bit of everything, mate. Um, you know, it's like um, younger you know, you, you know, a teenager, you, you, you are worried what everybody thinks because, you know, yeah. you're back to this cliche again about you don't really know who you are. I didn't understand that either, but, you know, there's, there is, I mean, really why the brand's called 40 as well, pal, is because at 40 year old, mm. I, I had a, I, it was like somebody flicked a switch with me. I can't explain it to you. I, did, I read a book called The Alchemist by Paolo Coelho. It That's a great book. Life. Great book. I mean, it's incredible. It's about, it's about chasing your dreams. And I, but I had to read it three times, by the way, that's three, that's no three, that's four in it. <laughs> I had to read it three times um, before it, it clicked because I read it and it didn't really connect with me. And as I got a wee bit older, I went back to it again, read it again. A wee bit more, I'm going, right, okay. But I mean, it's like, it's like it's, I try really, really hard to, to be as positive as I possibly can. But it's about learning again. And, and you know what, Paul, I'm... I'm grateful that you know i've got some really amazing people round about me that you know allow me to be positive yeah. because it's back to that whole thing again pal when you work with someone who's not positive then it can be very very difficult because that's due to how much happiness they have about themselves yeah you tend to find that you tend to find that you, you know back to back to what you're saying big fella about about like maybe kind of a um somebody listening to a track and 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 maybe kind of going, oh, I don't like it. What I find is, is like, see when somebody's happy and they love what they do, they'll offer advice. They maybe hear something about your track and they go, do you know what, buddy, I tell you what, I would maybe try something like this. Where somebody who's very negative go, that's absolutely pish. Do you know what I mean? There's a difference there. There's a difference between... <laughs> you know them, man. Do you know what I mean? Exactly, mate. So there's a difference between advice and opinion. Opinion are for people who, for me, ultimately, aren't happy within themselves. Advice is for people who 
know that being happy and, and sharing that happiness with people is about actually maybe guiding and, and maybe bringing their experiences, maybe you could change that. So I find that as a fundamental thing within people that I come across. But you learn that, and as I've actually learned over the years as well, guys, about how not to react to things. You know, you tend to find that like negative people are unhappy people who offer opinion. You can, I've stopped myself with, you know, answering back because I kind of went, hold on a minute here. It's not how I see things, so, you know, that's cool. I'm not going to affect that situation because obviously in a place where it's quite negative. So that's kind of what I find, pal, is like, you know, I've I'm, I'm been very grateful that with all the people in my life, they've, they've, they've really wanted to be involved with me as well, and that's made a massive difference to us, pal. You know, and for me, anybody that comes involved with us, we've got to have a good relationship with them. Of course, see, when it comes to, like, when you look for expanding your team at 40, yeah. do you look for the same values and what you guys have got already when you're going through that process? Um, that's been another really big learning curve as well, pal. Part of my downfall and a lot of times with people is, which is, same again, I know how you do those interviews and they say, which are negative and positive? It's the same thing, you're going, ah, why would you say that? But it's true, it's like, my default emotion is always to see the, the good within situations. That can be also learning that because of how maybe somebody feels about themselves, it's maybe they don't see that, so it can cause a negative situation. What I mean by that as well is like, you know, it's like almost like slightly try to give someone too many chances when really they're not interested in the chance. It's always just a bit of an excuse. So I've, I've, made, I've made loads of decisions and loads of choices, pal, that I haven't made out. But that's another learning process. So now what I do is like you get Johnny, who's you know a massive member of the team. You know what I do is I now let Johnny do the recruitment because Johnny's got a great eye for recruitment. Where before I same again, I would just go, "I come on, come on in, we'll make it work." And it's, it's just like, it's, and sometimes you've just got to be very honest with people and just say, "Listen, it's the power of the team and each other's skills to bring for the one collective kind of goal." So Johnny, brilliant at the recruitment. You're brilliant at what you do, Peter. You know, it's like everyone's great at their thing and then you fit it together and then there's a the magic. Yeah. You know? I'll, I'll That's the same, No, sorry, you go. No, I'm sorry. thinking that, I think, like, as well, like, you can't also let that affect your personality because our yeah. souls are always going to come along the way. <laughs> it's like, how are you, are you going to let that person, because you had that bad experience, oh, that's it, my wall's up, I'll never be like that. Yeah. That's one thing I always say. It's like, man, just because somebody burns you doesn't mean that should change who you are. It's more a reflection of what's going on in their head. And actually, I feel sorry for them, especially if they're leaving a negative comment or they're coming in and they're literally coming in for the cash, not for the vision. They want paid. Mm -hmm. And it's like, mate, whoa, hold on. Like, you're going to get paid. Why does it need to be about that? So I think yeah. it's like, even when you get burned, you just, I, I just deflect to be going even more positive and going, do you know what? I'm not going to let that change yeah, yeah. who I am. Do you know what I mean? I'm going to make you hate me even more. There totally, you go. <laughs> totally, man. Totally. And all I'm going to be is nice to you every time you see me. What can you say bad? Because I'm going to just be sound. It's just difficult, though, Pat. It's like it's really, really difficult to, you know, because at the end of the day, you know, when you're trying to see the best in people, you know, you can't help get hurt sometimes. I mean, it happens. I mean, even like the reason we'll probably find yourselves as well, guys, when somebody does leave a negative comment, on your socials or stuff like that because this isn't just about business it isn't just about getting paid of course you take it personally yeah. you, you, you know I challenge anybody not to but I am now learning it's that whole thing the right guy it's like for me it's about actually saying right okay cool you know there's a there's a couple of absolute cracking negative comments maybe about a month ago but what I found is like the profile there's no profile picture it seems to be you know, it's almost like you get those trolls. And that's the thing as well. It's like that's ultimately people are not happy. Who okay. just Because happy people are, 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 you know, are happy for you to do well. And, and like, you know, it's like, it's like sometimes when you're chasing your dreams and people are not in that position, it's really difficult for them to comprehend it. And you, how many times have you heard this? Well, I would they do that. It's not something I would do. That's cool. It's not, you're not doing it, but I am. Who do you so, think you are? <laughs> I, who do you think you are? Um, I'm, I'm, well, I've got five names, so you can take whatever <laughs> you want. Hello. No, but, yeah, but that's the thing. It's like, I, I feel with that as well, pal. You know, it's like, it's, it's difficult sometimes, you know, it's like, because like when you open your heart to somebody and they have a go at you, you know, how, how can you know be kind of wee bit down about that? But you're right, pal. You've got to learn how you, how you deal with that. And that's another thing it? aspect. Self totally, just, and, and actually, when the feelings start creeping in, it's actually taking a wee breath and going, hold on. 
I know why I'm feeling like this because he's just been a dick. But you know, like give it two minutes, it'll be all right. It's like it's just about letting as much as you can the words bounce off you, as much as that can be difficult, and it can't always be joy, as you say. But it's about working on it every single day. It's the same as learning yeah. a language or whatever. You've got to work on it every single day. It's the same as the mind. You can't just oh, I've read that book. That's me sorted for life. No, life, life will smash you every single day, man. <laughs> And that's the thing. It's like it's like you know, you just as you're younger, uh, you 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 accept people into your life, and you make allowances for the people. And that's why sometimes that you're, you're constantly being forced to deal with their negativity because same again. It's like, but as you get a bit older, you know what I've found myself is like we become across if we've come across negative people, we remove ourselves. Now that's the key: removing yourself from that situation, and it becomes very. And another thing as well, which I've, I've actually loved about getting older, is about learning how to say no positively. I found that very, very, very difficult when I was younger to actually say no. You know, you always went, I need bother when you'd absolutely no way of being able to do something for, for. And what I found is, is the longer that kept going, you were the only the one that came out the bad guy. So no, now we've got very much a, 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 um, a an atmosphere in here of. Listen, if you don't own up to that and you don't say no, you are hate for that because, you know, you need to be able to say, listen, guys, I can't do that. And people really, really appreciate it. And that's what I loved. It was about learning another part of you going, no doesn't have to be negative. You know, no is actually about giving somebody positive feedback or, or being honest with yourself and saying, listen, look, don't do that way, do this way. Or listen, I can't do that. And you know what? You actually find that life becomes a lot simpler <laughs> you can actually say no i'm okay you know it's it's just but such is life aye aye so uh you started out in cruise jeans so yes. um you know back then obviously you were working as like what would you call it a stylist would you say um do you know what Paul, that's an arcing thing to bring it down really really kind of a really simply i'm a punter i'm a music punter I buy clobber all the time because I'm a punter. Yeah. It's like my wife was giving me a hard time because I buy hunters of trainers and, and, and just other bits. But I was saying to her, she's like, Kelly, that's like you saying to a DJ, you, what do you mean you don't buy music? Yeah. Do you mean it's like, it's like this yeah, is who course. I am, this is what I do. But Stephen, at the same back, pal, when I was, um, you know, I, the clothing for me, I've got a really, I've got an emotional connection with clothes. Um, because, you know, like, you know, when I, I was very grateful, Stone Island was a, a massive brand for me when I was younger because, you know, it was, for what it represented to, to me, you know, it was like that association with, you know, going to the football, but the football for me was also a sense of community. You know, it wasn't about anything else apart from going to football with your pals and getting dressed up with a clobber and it was it was an amazing, but also, you know, what I loved about Stone Island was about garment engineering, you know, it was about how they made clothes do different things. So when I started working in, in Cruise Pal, it was, it was another amazing thing because, I was sharing my happiness and joy with people who were walking through the door who had the same happiness and joy about that, that brand of clothing. You know, so same again, I wasn't a stylist, I wasn't a, I was a punter yeah. who could sell clobber to people who felt the same way about the clothes yeah. that I did. Right. And it's like, now we, what we do with 40 is amplifying that a million times because it's new stuff that we create within ourselves and we can tell stories through that we amazingly get to share that with, with other people. So that's what I'm saying, mate. I, I'm just an oilist. You know, it's like the I fact know. that, like, you know, and, and build it up. But another thing as well, Paul, which has always, always fascinated me, is back to that whole thing about having that emotional connection with people and the garment. No matter what I wear or what I've got, I have very, very, really throw clothes away because it's almost like I can tell you what I was wearing it with, who I was with, what music was getting played. You know, it's like yeah, I can tell it. you stories through. Absolutely, pal. And it's like hearing a bit of music. You're yeah. Like, oh, yeah. man, same. remember I that time with the artist? It's exactly the same, pal. So for me, what I love as well is about people's stories, right? And what always amazed me is within a very, very short space of time, how much information and how much people would tell you about their lives and their stories based on having that same shared um, love with each other about things. And that's what always fascinated me is people's stories. You know, I, I always, like, within about five minutes, you've gone, gone, that's amazing. What do you mean you do what? So that also was about building relationships in an honest, open, genuine way. And it's what 40 is about, pal, with the people that support us and, you know, no using the word customer because yeah. it's about people. Yeah, exactly. You know, that person that walks through the door or buys online or, you know, it's like, 
you know, we appreciate that. That amazes us that people want to be part of our, our, our life and our brand. You know, so I'll never, ever, the day I die, will stop being grateful. Brilliant. It's, it's amazing. Yeah, it's amazing. Speaking of stories, could you tell us a story what happened in Cruise when the Coca-Cola rep turned up? <laughs> maybe tell you oh okay. how do I tell this story without, without really embarrassing myself oh my <laughs> god um, right how do, how do I break this story then right hold on a minute oh my god right I just need to go for it don't I you guys need- listen if you're listening please don't let this thing you view me right honest to god so anyway <laughs> I can't believe you know that story oh. who's been telling stories right. tell me <laughs> Or say secret sources. So it, oh God, I don't know if this will come across, across as well. As, anyway, so we had a wee Coca-Cola machine downstairs and, and cruising. And it was like just all the, the soft drinks and stuff like that. And there used to be a wee guy that came in and, and you know, dead, dead quiet wee guy. Oh, and uh, he would go downstairs, he'd bump his trolley downstairs and very, very quiet wee guy. And he'd always come up and he'd say to you, right, and stuff like that as well. And um, um, so the, the security policy had changed within the store. Uh, it was different people taking over and like, you know, you know, kind of, you know, actually you learn to kind of trust people and stuff like that. So anyway, there wasn't a lot of us in one day and the wee guy came in and he's bumped down his trolley and I'm shouting, is there anybody there can kind of keep a wee eye there? Obviously just because we were under uh, watch. So no, no. So he's come back upstairs and, and um, I said, excuse me, buddy. Sorry, I'm going to have to give you a wee search. And you could tell the wee guy was really shy and he's gone, what do you mean? Because he's never been searched before. We'd never done it with him, but... I'm like, mate, look, sorry, I'm going to just ask you, because like, if people would steal things, they would put it down like, their trouser front, or they would shove it underneath their, their legs and stuff like that. So I says, now you can imagine, remember somebody's not been searched before and going, can I, you just lift your top up for me? And he's going, what? What do you mean? I'm like, mate, I'm really, really sorry. So what he's done is he's lifted his top up, but he's lifted it right out of his nipples, right? And I'm going, oh, no. And the wee guy's mortally embarrassed, right? And I can, I'm embarrassed, he's embarrassed. I can't believe I'm telling you this story, man, honestly. So anyway. <laughs> so he's, he's went out and I went out for my lunch and I could see the wee Coca-Cola van like moving back and forth this wee guy's in the front and he's on the phone I'm going that's about me I know he's, he's on the phone so I, I've come back in and Donna the, my boss at the time Donna's going um, did you search the wee Coca-Cola guy did he lift his top right or his nipple he's really embarrassed I'm like Donna look I'm really sorry pal I, I, I'd never meant to work out that way I'm absolutely generally I mean I'm a bit gutted for the wee guy so I like, listen, his boss has gone absolutely mental, right? And I'm going, oh, God, she's going to come in and speak to you. I'm like, well, cool, no problem. You know, I can maybe explain myself. So it was maybe a couple of days later. And, and the thing is, with the, the back office at Cruise, it was always roasting. And this was during a wee heat wave as well, right? It was always roasting. So, like, you know, if you shut the door, it would build up heat really massively. So I actually can't believe I'm telling this story. Um, so... <laughs> Um, so I've come in for my lunch again and Donna's like, Harry, the wee woman's in from Coca-Cola. I'm like, okay, sure, no problem. But the thing is, I'd, I'd had a really, really dodgy stomach that day, like really dodgy. And, you know, I'd been doing wee chuffs all day, right? So um, so I've got sin. I've got sin. <laughs> Donna's come in. It's me, Donna, and this wee woman for Coca-Cola. And I'm starting to get really bad pains in my stomach, like really bad pains. And the so, heat. Now, uh, right, and the heat, right? So... So next thing I'm starting to get like really jaggy pains in my stomach and jaggy pains somewhere else. And I'm going, ah, ah, God, ah, God. And the two of them are going, are you all right? Next thing I've actually let rip. And I mean, I'm not, quite, not talking about just a ripper. I'm talking about really smelly and really loud. Now you can imagine I'm in there for somebody to talk to me and the two of them have just went, oh my God. And I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry. And it was stinking. I can't even believe I'm actually telling you this story. So anyway, oh. the wee woman just got out and just left. So I made a bad situation 
50 times worse. Oh, man. So three days later, another wee guy came in, lifted the Coca-Cola machine out of the shop, and that was the last we heard them. So ah. thanks very much for uh, for bringing that story up, Stephen. Oh, brilliant. But you know what, mate? You, I bet you at the time you wanted the world to end, right? But you survived. Here you are. You're still the same. You know, you're still all right. You're all right, man. You survived. I was, I, I was actually really concerned about the health of that wee woman, to be brutally honest, because it was not pleasant at all. I'm thinking, I've actually killed her, by the way. <laughs> it's worse than sarin gas. <laughs> well, it, it's a natural thing. It can happen. It can happen, but oh. I, but I mean, talk about the wrong timing, though. I know, that's I know they say Everton's for a reason and all that, but I mean, Jesus. I couldn't, I actually couldn't believe it. And and Donna, me and Donna had a great relationship with each other, you know, very similar personality. And Donna went, Harry, what, what happened? I'm like, I, I don't know. And I actually met her a couple of, like, a, about a year later. I actually wasn't working in the store at the time. And we were sitting in the train, the Edinburgh train, and Donna went, do you remember the time you farted in front of the wee Coca-Cola moment? And that was that, man, we laughed. For about an hour, couldn't you? you know that way the tears are actually rolling down your face, but uh, oh, you know, no, I can't it, <laughs> oh, right. oh my oh, god, expect oh, honestly, thanks for that, boys. I, I really, really appreciate that. So, swiftly onto something else. So, you've got an amazing like, relationship over the years with like uh, the main man, Carol Cox. Yes, you've been like what an ambassador, really, for, for the brand. Like, how did that relationship start, and how did it you kind of strike that up? So same again, you talk about like, how things work out and a bit just having the honesty of of people and a bit the, the, the building up a good, genuine relationship with people. And, and same again, if the, the Digital Groove boys are, are, are watching, um, Mikey, Woody and Wee Dell, you know, I'm very, very grateful for that opportunity the boys gave us. And Dell's been a friend of mine, so has Woody been a friend of mine for a long time. And they, they were saying this, and we'd literally just started, but in the basement, the hairdressers, um, and the boys come out to see me and say, like, we man, how do you fancy coming and playing in space? And I'm like, ah, you got to be kidding me, honestly. She's like, I we do El Salon. Uh, we'd like you come and play. So we just started, pal, and, and, and we do a lot of kind of specialised finishing stuff like that. It wasn't specifically for, for Cara Cox or like that that we took. So basically what we did is we did the monster in a, in a finish called Phosphorescent, which is going to darker, UV active. And what we were doing is we were trying to take that for maybe... And another two amazing guys that actually ran space at the time on a Tuesday night for the Music is Revolution night is uh, Dave Browning and Big uh, Owen. And they're just lovely guys again, very, very nice. And so got to play, fantastic. And it was actually more towards the night. I still had the T-shirt and that. I, I actually, I know a girl who knew Big Carol very well and she'd given us a wee bit of inform inside information that uh, the big man was at a triple XL. So we got one done specifically for him. Right. So at the end of the night, we Dell come up and he says, mate, have you got that? T-shirt for, for Big Carol. I'm like, aye, aye, mate. So we went through and gave it through to sound tech because I don't know if, if, if anybody had been in space um, up at the, the, the box in the main room, you couldn't get anywhere near it. You had a wee bit at the back that you could stand, but literally, I mean, it was like, I think it was like something like a 20 foot by a 20 foot DJ box that you literally couldn't access anybody. So Dell had actually managed to get um, the T-shirt to, to his sound tech, not even Carol. So it was maybe about four weeks later, another friend of mine, Steve McGlinchey, he'd sent me a message saying, mate, that's some advertising. And I'm going, what do you mean? Hmm. And um, he says, have you seen the picture of Big Carol Cox at Cafe Mambo with Annie Mack wearing your T-shirt? And I'm going, "Wow, what? You're so I, mean, I went on, mate, and I, mate, I nearly fell off the floor. I couldn't actually believe it. But what had actually, apparently the story went, is like they'd actually got the T-shirt to, to Carol, and he'd went home, and obviously by that point, it's like, Seven eight o'clock in the morning, and the big guy apparently is getting like blackout curtains in his room, and he's taking the t-shirt out of the bag, and because it's glow in the dark as well, it it glowed. So he's then tried it on, it fitted him, and then somebody else told him about the story about the wee fella, my wee fella drawing the monster, and he kind of really connected with it. Right. Um. So much so we got a wee call off his his manager, Lynn, uh, Lynn Cosgrave at the time, saying, "Listen, would you send Carol some t-shirts?" So we lesson I've learned over the years is. Uh, Human nature is you want what you can't have, right? So instead of sending them 20 t-shirts, we sent them two, right? Go, you know what? If he wears them, he wears them. So about another three weeks later, we got another message saying, listen, could you send him more? He loves these t-shirts. Right. So what we kind of thought, and same again, what you're talking about, like people are people. And when you have got a connection with someone, you know, what we found is, is that people who have been higher up the perceived tree, Pal, I've been the people who have been more willing to help you out because they've, they've the pe they're the people who have worked as hard to get there. So the same again, they talk about, they recognise the same thing, and we just thought, do you know what? 
why don't we ask if we can actually make some T-shirts for Carl, specifically a Carol Cox 40 collaboration? And we then transpired that no one had asked them to do that before. Now, same again, you talk about expectations or assumptions, you know, and when you assume something, how can you have knowledge of that? So see if you ask a question for the first time with the best interests at heart. And next thing they've come back and they went, absolutely, we'd love for you to do that. So we're going, hold on a minute here, this is mental. So it actually kind of started to work out with, with Dave and their team that they wanted us to actually design a full collection for Carol. So towards the end of the seasons in Music is Revolution, pal, that we were very grateful and honoured that we got to um, do them. And when I, I got to finally meet Carol, he's an amazing person. He's a very, very down-to-earth guy. And same again, you've got that connection. And do you know what, pal? That was another amazing experience. And something just through uh, honesty of just going, guys, would you mind if we actually done some, some clothing for him? And they went, absolutely. So, mate, same again, absolutely and utterly. And um, another big friend of mine as well, big uh, Michael Williams. Um, big Michael uh, runs Dan Emerson's um, uh, record label for him. And Dan got me introduced to him. Uh, sorry, Michael got me introduced to Dan. So there I'm sitting in a greasy cafe in London talking to Dan Emerson, Mr. Bon Slippy himself. Wow. And then the next day I'm in the car with the wee man and what comes on the radio, Bon Slippy. Wow. And you're going, <laughs> oh my God. Up. Can you make it up, mate? You know, and that's what I'm saying. It's like, it's like a bit appreciating those situations and going, oh my God. And it's not the fact that what I've done, not at all. Not at all. It's about just really appreciating, you know, like having relationships with people that can maybe hopefully share a bit of that joy and really, really, so, you know, we always look at that as well, Pat. It's not about the ego standing up and saying, well, yeah. guess what we've done? Not at all. That's yeah. very personal and being able to, you know, share these situations, which is pretty amazing. I mean, even like, very grateful again for, you know, like when Tina Park was here, you know, I got a, a, a DJ at the Bacardi tent for a few years and, you know, same again, we Nicky Palaki, a good friend of mine, you know, gave me an opportunity and, and that, that, the memories will stay with me forever. Yeah. But a very personal thing, it's no about name dropping or saying, guess what I've done, it's about, you know, being thankful for the guys believing in you and giving you an opportunity yes, to, to just share that, mate, which is just amazing, you know? I what a story and, and you always say this gal actually like see that you know you you've got these big kind of celebrities almost they're just people like when it's, you get in front of them or you're emailing them surreal of course but like they're genuinely they've got emotions they feel they breathe everything they're just humans you know and, totally. and they weren't spoken to like that as well i think celebrities and people at that level have people sucking up their ass day in, day out. Yeah. It's refreshing yeah. when someone comes in and maybe doesn't even really know who they are and go, oh, I'm not really that acquainted, you know, but they speak to them normally as opposed to be like, oh my God, can I say this? Can I say that? Yeah. You know, and yeah. it, 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 Absolutely. one of my mottos really is just speak to people like you know them. They're either going to like it or they'll know. I can't help that. Yeah, <laughs> that is the thing, mate. That's back to that. It's exactly the whole... I think when you're honest, everything cross-references each other. You know, it comes through that that centre point of being honest with people. And it's exactly that again. It's like, you know, it's like, you know, people who love what they do, you know, are very honest about it. There's no ego attached to it. So you tend to find that that person has genuinely tried their hardest and, and is... And it's tried and it's maybe not worked it, but because they love it, they keep going and keep going. So they look for the, the how do I get there? They don't look for the exit. So it's back to that central point again about what we're talking about. And it's exactly that part. People are genuinely appreciative of you, are genuinely being honest with them as well. Say, by the way, I love what you do. You know, I revere that. You know, it's been part of me for such a long time. The fact I got a chance to meet you. And people can be a bit, oh, well, well thanks very much. And a wee bit, embarrassed about it sometimes so because that, that's like if you love what you do then you know it's like you don't go ah well I know yeah I know I'm brilliant you know like if you see somebody say I know I'm brilliant I tend to find that what people tell you that that's what they're not <laughs> what people tell you they have that's what they don't mm -hmm. and you know what I mean and, and and it's the whole kind of thing mate and for me that's been always been my experience as far I can't talk for anybody else but for me that's how it's, it's always kind of worked for me it's kind of like being humble then, isn't it? When people are like, mate, you were amazing. You're like, oh, no, no, no. Actually, they know they've done well, but being humble, like it's the opposite. So when someone's kind of going, no, I don't really, you know, it's like actually they should be praised, but the person's walking about going, I'm the best. You're like, he's got, he's got some bad things going on in his head, man. Yeah, it's, <laughs> totally it's like It's like a whole thing, like for example, yeah, you probably find this as well for a music aspect, chaps. See when you connect with people and you've got that crowd or the people who are, are willing you to play music, all you're doing is amplifying how they feel. 
because they share the same feelings. You're just an opportunity. You maybe get to play that music or design that thing. It's like just sharing the same passion with people. And, and you know, one of the gigs we did in particular back at Space was, was really amazing because, you know, like folk were actually standing in front of you going, again, again. And it was like, you're just, you were in awe of that because it was like, you're like, oh my God. God, that that's just you're sharing that passion. You're you're bearing your soul, and people are bearing their soul back to you. And, and and that for me is like saying again, it's like you come off and you know it's not about going. You know what, man, I absolutely ripped it apart last night. You're actually going. Do you know what? That was actually to be able to share that experience was just phenomenal. And that's you know saying again, part you know you could call it humble if you like, but I think it's kind of breaking down. Just saying, you know, like, just enjoy your experiences and be happy that you've been able to do that. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. I mean, it is the here and now that all that matters because the future doesn't exist and the past is something you can't eat, you can't eat control. It's happened. It's you know, like me telling you my farting story. That's in the past now, digitally. I'll never go away. Just I can't change that. I can't go back and not tell you that story. <laughs> no, but then you would have a class story to tell. Oh my God, <laughs> guys, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry for the wee Coca Cola lady, man. Oh my god, I drink Iron Bruno, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> I've been made. there is other soft drinks out there, guys. I'm not I'm not a, I'm not sponsoring that brand. <laughs> <laughs> so um like we we, we sometimes ask to uh, ask podcast guests this like what advice would you give like a younger version of yourself, maybe somebody that's watching this or listening who are ambitious but they're maybe get some self doubt, you know, some key advice that they could listen to you and, and you know and, and kind of get your viewpoint on some solid advice for somebody young. It's, it's all right. It's all right looking back and, and saying, right, this, this and this, because as we said as well, guys, there's only ever here and now. And when you're doing things, of course, you've got the insecurities and you're going, is this going to work? You do second guess yourself. You know, there's no such thing as, you know, overconfidence is, is ego. You know, and having that self-confidence, that comes through experience. But even like that, you're still reaching. So, I just think, pal, that as I tell my kids, because another real, really true thing for me now, 40 is not what I do for my life, it's my kids. 40 is just my kind of representation of manifesting my, my, my passion in life. You know, my job really is my kids and my family and my wife. And it's about literally, my wee man's actually fantastic on a scooter, he's a wee skater, right? And he's amazing. And it's I'm like, ah, do you know what? See, years ago, and you'd all these, you didn't have the same opportunities of different careers or different choices in your life. What I would say to people is, honestly, God, see what you love to do. That's what you're meant to do, right? That's it. Mm -hmm. It will test you. I'm the alchemist. It talks about coming across that big rock in the desert, and you've got two choices. You either turn back or you go around that rock. But where are you going to come back to? The point you're supposed to be. You know, no matter what you do in life, it requires effort. It requires application. But would you know that I have effort and application is something you, you love and sets you in fire on a day-to-day -day basis rather than actually go and do something that you hate. And same again, that's another thing, and that's why it's so important that not everybody has that opportunity. Not everybody's been gifted that idea. Creativity takes courage. And not everybody has that mindset either, pal. So from a blanket thing, again, I can only offer advice from people who are willing to think, you know what, I love this. Go and do it. Because there will be people, even when we started as well, pal, there was people out there who are, I, I really loved and revered going, never. Because there's a fear there. When, we were, when I'm looking after my family, I've got my bills to pay. You know, it's like, of course you didn't know my mortgage to pay. How am I going to put food on my kids' table? But... You know, you've got to take that step. And it's all right me saying that now, but, excuse my language, but I was absolutely shite myself. But that's another good thing, because I fear's a good thing, because it really, really it pushes you on. But that's the only thing I can say, pal. Find <clears throat> what makes you, what, what you love, and go after it tooth and nail. Be fearless. Be fearless or use the fear to your advantage. I think your speech there is going to get put under a bed of, like, inspirational music. <laughs> and amass millions and millions. <laughs> that was mega inspiring, honestly. Definitely. Oh, guys, geez, oh man. It's, you know what, boys, thanks. But at the same point, pal, I can only share my experiences with you, you know, and it's like the, the fact you've given me that opportunity 
is I can't even tell you how much that I'm I'm grateful for it. You know, it's like, and that's what I'm saying. It's a bit, it's a bit mad sometimes that you maybe hear some people say something to you about they really love what you're doing, and it's like it's a bit it's a bit hard to hear sometimes because you're going. I'm only doing what, what I do, you know, it's like sometimes you don't know how to react to that, you get a bit, ah, you know, so honestly boys, I, I really, really appreciate it, that the fact that you take your time out your day, you actually come and speak to me about what we're doing, give me the opportunity to tell a story, and, right. and you know what guys, thank you. Likewise, and I'll, I just think the, the, the same, like you're talking about, you try hard to be positive in that. Anytime I've ever seen you, even if it's online, which I know isn't exactly real, right? But I've seen <laughs> you, I've met you that one or two times in the flesh. That's what I've walked away leaving. Like, I would, I want, I want a wee night with that guy, man. I want a night with that guy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want, like, See, once lockdown's done, boys, up to my house, man. We'll go radio red, all right? That sounds let's good. Let's do it. Spin some my wife's as mad as a, talk, some, talk some stuff. My wife's as mad as a bag of 10 dugs. So, do you know what I mean? You will be more than welcome. <laughs> that sounds good. Well, on that note, mate, it's been uh, brilliant to catch up with you. Um, honestly, inspiring, yes. chat, funny chats, and it's, it was a long time coming, so, uh, you know, and, you know it's not and can I just say you as well, guys? I heard about him earlier, like, and you then mentioned him on this, the one you're talking about, the, the, the Indian guy. I literally uh, had a podcast, like, about an hour ago, and then you mentioned him. See, See if I can say to anybody, go and listen to Sid Guru, right? The guy is absolutely amazing. He, he rides motorbikes, he's funny, he talks about real situations. And But I'm just talking from a personal aspect, he connected with me in the part of my life I'm in, and he's just brilliant. Um, but honestly, I just want to say you two boys, really, really keep it up because you're doing a fantastic job. Don't ever lose the passion, don't ever lose the honesty of what you do. And do you know what, boys? Keep Thank you very, very much. Thank you, no, mate. No, thank you, mate. Honestly, yeah, we'll see you soon. All right, guys. Total pleasure. Thanks very much. Catch you soon, mate. Bye.